Okay, let's uh, bring the meeting to order. Is there any uh, additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, actually, I have a few. Okay. Um, we wanted to discuss the uh, right coordinator position and forming the search committee. Uh, we received, we also received a notification from uh, FEMA about uh, flood mapping and we wanted to make the board and the public aware of that opportunity and uh, a brief discussion about the merger proposals and the scoring for, for the merger proposals. Okay. Anyone else? We need to do the inclusivity statement. The voters decided on a town meeting day. Inclusivity statement. Okay. Can we just go over the process for the school board vacancy mm -hmm. briefly? At some point tonight? Board vacancy. Anything else? I also wanted just to talk about the <clears throat> logistics of getting a old mill park group together to do some spring cleaning hmm. next. I don't, you know, just to see what. Something beyond green up day. Yes. That was the other thing. Green up coordinator, is that? Uh, it's not on here, but we can talk about that. We probably should. So, old mill and green up. Anything else? Okay. The board prepared to approve the meeting minutes for February 18th and the 25th. Uh, uh, motion to approve. We have motion. We have second. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed? Rosemary, you got the floor. Okay, I handed up the budget status report. Okay. Sand and salt, anything else coming out? No, we both those are still coming in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gravel will depend on what's in okay. yeah. No, we might be a better shipping the state. Okay. Aren't Half we always? Dollars in one select board member? Yes. 10 a.m.? Okay. We appear um, one tax sale from last year. They are not going to redeem. And that's in the middle of uh, June. Okay. We've had the electric and water sewer shut off last week. Okay. And we've got six liquor licenses. Where's my, does it sound like they're living in the house? Are they still living in the house? This is a trailer. Are they still living in the trailer? No. So. Uh, Johnson Sterling Market, Butternut Mountain Farm, Downtown Pizzeria. Is there a liquor license in their outside consumption permit? And Hotback Snacks, is there a liquor mm -hmm. license in? Uh, outside consumption permit and they would like to change their uh, location 
for venues they want to make as well as a little strip. There's a map here you guys can look at. Okay. Which place is that? How about snacks? Okay. If they have special events, they like yep. to use that place. And Dollar General. And Jolly's. They all the same, with the exception of uh, hot dog. Yes. Just hot back in downtown or the restaurants. So those are just mm -hmm. stores. And your hours are going to be the same, right? You're you're not looking for different hours at hot back. No. You're just looking for a different outdoor consumption. Now, I can't actually remember if we were actually approved or we did go ahead and do an outdoor consumption because it was winter. I don't think we did apply because it was kind of useless to apply for something that wasn't going to be used. Yeah. So what we're looking for is to be permitted for a larger area, but we won't be using that unless there is a special event or something along those lines. Right. There's two different colors on there. The main one is something a lot smaller, but if there was a bigger event, we'd be able to expand the space down, I think, pink and orange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Where are the storage units? Uh, so the long skinny piece is behind hog bags to the right to the left of the storage unit. You can't see it yeah, on the okay. road because it's actually just behind it. Uh, okay. Right, right. And there's no neighbors there on the other side. That, that used to be an area they had outdoor serving. They prior, had the right? volleyball courts were over right. there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looks good. Can we approve them all in one slate, or should we? If the board's so willing, if you want to make a motion. Yeah, I move that we approve the whole slate. With any it's conditions? That's the usual so letter. The usual letter. Yeah, usual letter. Any, do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? How many more do we still have coming in? I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Were the maple fields on that list? They already got theirs. They got theirs. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Do you have anything else for us? That's all. Anybody got any questions? Brian, if you probably want to get started. You can still sign these and this. There's not a lot on the report. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to point out. You will finish when I talked about not plowing to Bacon Road next year and yeah. not creating this summer on Plot Road. Mm -hmm. That is official. I made an agreement with Waterville. They'll start taking care of that road up to the roads. So we'll finish plowing out this season, but then they're going to start, they'll take care of it in the mud season and they'll take care of it and they'll plow it uh, in the winter. And they were willing and accommodating there? Yeah, I mean, we've been doing it for 20 some years. I, I think they understood that yeah. it was their turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, other than that, I think the overtime is pretty close to staying what I've talked to you in the summer. Anybody got any questions for Brian? Yeah, we signed director's orders to Jason Whitehill for $1,100 for a snap-on toolbox. Yes. Did we get our money's worth? Yes. I see that we spent about snap extra. Toolbox. We signed director's orders for $10,000 extra in salt. Yes. And approximately $20,000 in sand. Sounds about right. Yeah. Hopefully we can get to the end of that here pretty quick. Yes, and a lot of that, a lot of the sand money was more of a insurance. I mean, we could probably could, I'm sure, I'm fairly certain we'll get by without needing that. But because there's such a big demand on the local resource now, that's in play whether or not that was going to be available if we didn't, if our, if our sand supply didn't last and that was not available, then we would be. <coughs> In, okay. in a hard situation. So I wanted to make sure that didn't happen. So 
a good chunk of that won't be used, but it needed to be bought for insurance reasons. No, that's good thinking. Thank you. And if I remember our conversation right, wasn't it that the we bought it at that time because the price was about to go up? Yes. Price. That's an even better deal. <laughs> this is Mike still. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You probably want to stick around for a couple of items that we have. Okay. The, the highway access and maybe for the uh, mine road update. Sure. Um, a lot of people here are, are there certain things on the agenda that you're here for that we could move ahead for you or you're, you're interested in just sitting through a little bit? Well, I'm here for the appointment, so I'll Okay, and you always sit through anyways. <laughs> I'm here for the merger. Okay, for that, for that's going to be a while before we get to that. Yeah, I'm not here for it. Um, when we start and do the things for Brian first, he wants to leave. Okay. Uh, so first, uh, let's go ahead and get into the uh, highway access and work in the right of way policy. Um, so I sent out a copy uh, last week. Uh, the only updates since then is I've started but haven't finished working on the application forms. Um, at this point, I'd like to send it for legal review, but there was a major kind of difference to the board's request on, uh, the board had a lot of concerns about the fourth class, about the interactions of this policy with the fourth class road policy. Mm -hmm. And the changes that the board was requesting uh, were really a departure from our current fourth class road policy which, which is a, we have a distinct fourth class road policy. Um, so I, we talked with our meeting with the planning commission about making updates to the fourth class road policy, but that we were gonna, that requires a little bit more thought and research and we were going to put the planning commission on that task. So this as written will have no effect on our current policy with regard to fourth class roads and doing maintenance and work on fourth class roads. Uh, it'll be the way it is right now for the time being, and then we'll update the fourth class road policy to accomplish uh, the things that the, the board was asking for. Trying to incorporate highway, act, like driveways, work in the right of way, and fourth class roads all into one, uh, it's not impossible. We could add more to it, but it starts getting very burdensome. Um, so what you're basically looking for tonight is the board's comfort level on sending it to legal review. Right. If you have any major changes or uh, departures, if you really do want to tackle those issues about uh, permits for people doing work in the right of way on a fourth class road, uh, for snow plowing or, or regular maintenance, then we really should tackle those before we send it to legal review. But if you're okay deferring that to uh, the update to our fourth class road policy, then I, I think I, I handled the rest of the board's concerns and needs. What's the board's thought? I think it's a good idea to send it for the review, but my, my question is that if we are defining highways as the highway system, don't we have to say highways are one, two, and three, or two and three, and not four? How do we, how do we, because otherwise you're, you're looking at this and you're gonna say, or I think you're saying, well, how does this mesh with our fourth class road? Maybe you say highway system, or is this system except fourth class roads or something? I don't know how you do it, but. Uh, I have, a, I have a definitional problem. I think that that's something that I need a little bit of help with how to make the to interact a little more cleanly. That we do want, uh, basically we want the fourth class road policy to supersede the parts of this where we want it to supersede them. I think, 
you know, my totally amateur, not attorney opinion would be that we want this basically to apply to fourth class roads, but then carve out exemptions and things that you don't need to, cases where you wouldn't need it to, to apply for a permit to do certain actions on fourth class roads. What, what would somebody do on a fourth class highway that wouldn't need to be addressed in here, could be addressed just in our fourth class highway policy? I'm, what I would like to see, um, no, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, what I'd like to see is uh, the ability for, um, you know, somebody applying for maintenance, if somebody wants to do maintenance on a fourth class road, uh, right now they should be getting a permit. What might be a more effective way of doing that is rather than making them get a permit, maybe we could um, just get a kind of a register of who's operating on that road, who's doing the maintenance. Make it a, a, what they call it, a permissible action rather than a permit action. I think to maybe Doug's point though, we don't want confusion out there to the average Joe on, okay, I live on a class four highway, you know, which policy pertains to me and what I want to do. So is there some way of having a, and this may be a question for the legal people, is some carve out of this highway policy that indicates we have a class four highway policy that deals with just class four highways. There isn't anything like that in here right now. No, but and I, I think that that interaction between the two, I need a little bit of okay. legal help on. Um, you know, it could be like Doug said about definitions. It could be that we define this as pertaining to, you know, yeah, class something. one, two, and three. Right. Uh, so, so maybe finding out from the legal people on what is the best means of doing this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that didn't print very well. Um, if you recall, the some of the there are still some questions that I have in here. The areas that are highlighted in red are areas where I'm I have remaining questions. Um, I think sorry. if you send it down to him, you should ask. Him. I'm not certain that. How this would work out, but I really think that uh, if you send it down to this, say that it's been suggested that since we have a four class road policy, that we, which is this one, and here it is, uh, that uh, it, we shouldn't, shouldn't we accept fourth class roads or fourth class roads and lower from our current policy, from this policy? I think that's a pretty good suggestion. Because otherwise, I don't think they'll, they'll they'll think about that. Yeah, no, we'll we'll have to mention how do we handle that? That we have a fourth class road policy. We want we still want to have a fourth class road policy, um, and we we need help with how how to how to make the two interact. Whether we just say it's exempt and it doesn't this doesn't apply. It, it might be because of our responsibilities that the state is putting on us with regard to water runoff and this general permit or whatever it's called that, that we want to take more control but that is not where we've been and and yet we want to get something in effect now for the problems that have existed on our on our other roads I think you know and uh, and we've got fourth class roads to think about too No. I, I think it's a, a good question mm -hmm. that I, I need the legal review and, and the assistance for. Um, I intend to take this to the League of Cities and Towns rather than our uh, private attorney. Uh, this is based off of a policy right. that the League of Cities and Towns wrote, so I'm expecting them to be a little more familiar with mm -hmm. uh, the justifications and the specifics that I, I started with. I didn't make 
I don't think I made major severe changes from what they started with. The best part about that is it's cheaper. It, it should be cheaper. <laughs> Anybody else got any concerns or issues? You might ask them if anybody, if, if other people have looked, other towns have looked at this, have they, how are they addressing? Because it's, it's, such, a, it's such a switch on fourth class roads. You know, if they sent out this general policy or, or anybody else saying, well, how do we work these two things together? That's good. I didn't ask uh, Rob Moore at the Regional Planning Commission that question, too. Um, you know, I can get it through the network of planning commissions, and they might be familiar with uh, some other towns how are also updating their roads policies and find out if there's been any uh, common threads that we might borrow from. So this this first sentence on section four, it's all of that. It's his, uh, any work, construction, regrading, resurfacing, on and on and on and on, so as to divert the flow of water under the into the highway right of way. So all of these things going up to so as to divert are saying you can you can put fill in if it's not going to yes divert flow. It it, it, right it loops back to the beginning yeah. of the sentence where it describes no person shall in any way affect the grade of the highway right of way or alter the flow of water so into or out of the right of way. And then we go on and describe a bunch of cases where you might alter the flow of water. Good. Uh, but as long as you are not changing the flow of water, you're okay. So questions like you, you can do basic maintenance on your driveway you can put a, a you know couple bucket loads of gravel to fill a hole in your driveway you're restoring the grade of uh, the space in our right-of-way so will the board like this run by the League of Cities and Towns and if there's some suggestion from them on how to address the class 4 policy issue bring it back to us yeah yeah before we send it for any legal review I have one question on page two and see the deposit. I thought we were going to have the road foreman allow, allow to, to diminish the, the deposit as well as increase it. Uh, when deemed appropriate by the road foreman. So the, the road foreman can issue a deposit or not issue a deposit. It's just that when we are issuing the deposit, it starts at five hundred dollars. Is that all in C? Yes. I read it as the minimum deposit will be five hundred dollars, but may increase. I don't see a decrease. Well, in it. well it's so when deemed appropriate. Okay. A damage deposit's required, so it could either be five hundred okay. or zero. All right. But it does say five hundred increase. It it's there isn't any. Anything in here that allows for a deposit between zero and five hundred dollars. I mean, five hundred is pretty minimal for for road work. It, oh yeah, oh yeah, I agree. I just thought that there are things that. Uh... So I, 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 the intention, and I believe that the the first sentence, uh, the when deemed appropriate by the road foreman. Uh, I think that allows the okay. road foreman to issue no deposit as an option, also. But if a deposit is required, the minimum is $500. Do you want to make that call in the first place? Yeah, I think it's appropriate. Okay. There's a lot of situations where I should have the ability to put a deposit, or, you know, I have a deposit secured that I don't have right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in our current policy, it's pretty much only for utilities, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this expands it to any, anything that Brian Fields has a, uh, a risk of damage to our uh, right of way and our infrastructure can require a damage deposit. Uh, and the guideline here is that if 
the person, if the damage, if the risk of damage is less than $500 worth of damage, we, we probably don't want to bother issuing a deposit for it. So do we want a sentence that specifically spells out, it says it can't be waived at the discretion of the road corner to make that more clear? So you don't think the first sentence is clear? Yeah, it is. Take that back. Okay. I was focused so much on the second sentence, I forgot to go back to the first. Any other concerns or issues? If not, you bring forth the lead and okay. come back. Mine road. All right. Uh, so, quick update on <clears throat> on Mine Road. Um, I think the board is aware, but I'll, I'll start back kind of at the beginning of this. That uh, on the Class Four section of Mine Road, um, it's owned by BASF, and they've contracted with Tom Wood for land management. Tom is uh, sugaring and doing a little bit of logging on, on their property uh, on their behalf. Tom had, we've asked Tom to get permits uh, for some of his improvements uh, and maintenance. Uh, we've had a little struggle with that recently uh, while grooming the trail. The snowmobile club uh, damaged a power line that he had run um, in the right of way. Um, over the ground, on the on the ground, over the snowbank on the ground. Uh, this is, uh, nobody was hurt. There was no damage, but obviously this is a pretty big concern. That uh, you know, if, even if he couldn't bury it, if he had just let people know it was there, it would have uh, been a lot less dangerous. So we, uh, we've been in touch with Tom. Uh, we've been in touch with BASF. Uh, been in touch with. Uh, state inspection. Um, what's going on right now is uh, for the state inspection, he's for the state he's going to have to bury it when the ground softens enough. Uh, he's going to have to, we're, we're going to be responsible for making sure that he gets a permit for this uh, before he buries it. Um, we've been in touch with BASF to let them know that this is a problem, that you know we really need to straighten these permits out, that we can't continue this way. We have uh, started an inventory of everything that's in our right of way that is unpermitted up there. Um, given the state of the road and the time of year, we can't get through and, and do everything right now, but uh, there's quite a bit in our right of way up there. Anything you want to add, Brian, from your observations up there? No, I don't think so. I think you, this sort of is part of our challenge for the Planning Commission. How do you address situations like this on Mine Road, an unmaintained Class 4 highway that nobody lives on? Uh, somebody's going in there doing activities such as this versus the homeowner who lives on a class four highway and just needs to plow it and keep it open for his access to his property. And part of the challenge for the planning commission is going to be, okay, how to put that in a policy so we can have the uh, restrictions that we need and require on those situations on class four highways where uh, they're doing activities such as mine road versus allowing the property owners to be able to plow the driveway, sand their driveway, you know, those normal type of maintenance activities. Somehow that's going to have to be spelled out in the class four highway policy. But this is a good illustration of where we need something because mine road is a mess with what's going on up there. He's got a he's got a power line that goes to a vacuum pump station. The station is well 
right in the travel portion of the highway um, that the snow the uh, snowmobile groomer goes I mean right next to it uh, he, he's basically treating it like his own private room why don't we ask him to stop or tell him to stop a big plow you said <laughs> No, I think that, so how, we can't compel him to move his gear out of the middle of the road? Yep. Yeah. We could. Why don't we? Well, I think that's what we're looking at now. Uh, right now, our current policy doesn't allow for, we don't have fees or fines associated with it. So we don't really have a lot in between, you know, forcing the removal of everything or asking him to comply and having, uh, we, we don't have a lot of middle ground or, or small recourse. Uh, and with this, it, it's gotten to the point where we have to consider a more serious action. Um, you know, of, of removing his, his material from our right of way. Has he been asked? Yes. Every, uh, every time we've had an issue with him on a specific issue, we've addressed it, he takes care of that, but then follows on with some other violation or uh, impediment to our right away. So this will be a good place to have a good policy. To well, do we need a new policy to ask him to remove it? No. To tell him to remove it? I don't believe so. I think that we have the recourse of... I think we have state statute that we can require it, but there's no teeth behind it if he ignores it. We don't have a fine. Well, I, 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 was I think we can remove it. I, I would check with the attorney, but I suspect that we can enforce a right of way to remove something, but I don't think that we can just issue a fine or something like that. I don't think that, that we have any kind of middle ground or any right. steps between well, I mean, if, asking nicely and... If we made the we order, we place the order to remove it and he doesn't, we have no mechanism for, you know, yeah, I, I don't fine know every day or whatever. Yeah. Well, I, you're looking at a fining mechanism. I think you're after an injunction. If they're building things right in the middle of the right of way, I don't think we should tolerate it. Just just because it's unused, it's it's still it's still our right of way. Yeah, and well, I think we have an obligation to preserve it for and open it. I wonder what our I don't know the power cable that was cut was it running you know across the road? What, what was its layout? You know, it's kind of parallel on the road. Yeah, it was at the edge of the road yeah, on the snowbank. But and it was there. It was proximate enough to where they where they were running the the machine because of where it was running to, or just because of where they laid it. Yeah. I mean, they could have laid it. <clears throat> they could have laid it farther out in the woods, and it wouldn't have been in anybody's way. It would have been out of the right of way if they had gone into the woods. It, it's if they went far enough. Yeah. It it's on the roadside of the tree line, uh, and they're isn't a large gap between the where the road is and where the tree line is. Um, so being on the road side of the tree line, it, uh, it became very easy for it to entangle in the groomer. What sign of a, kind of a power cord was it? Is it 110, you know, or is it 220? 220. Just a secondary out of a yeah. box. Out of a, now you've been in touch with Morseville Water and Light, and uh, they said the whole setup was all illegal. Correct. Uh, I've got. Uh, I've left a couple messages with them, but they haven't gotten back to me. Um, what they had said in the email that started this was that uh, that that their their oversight in this really ended at the meter. Right. But everything from the meter onward is actually illegal. It is a violation of the safety codes. There's a, uh, 
of national safety codes for it to run on the ground, over the ground. Uh, it needs to be buried if it's going to be there. Uh, there's a certain amount of leeway that he gets for the time of year and the fact that you can't actually bury it. Uh, so he's got, I think, 60 days to fix it. When did he put it in? We don't know. But the whole setup there, even the meter, is in our right of way, right? It is. So mm, no, the meter may not be in our right of way. It looks awful close to the road. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it is still. We didn't walk off the meter to check it, but it looked like it was in the right of way to me. Well, it looks like it's in the right of way to me too. How can more spill water and might even put a meter in our right of way without our permission? I mean, we've got to have well, some recourse there as well. They had a pole there already. Is it on a pole? It is on a pole. So how much should we be dealing with him versus the company that he works for? I mean, it seems like they need to. We've looped them in at this point that, uh, you know, I, I don't think that we deal directly with Tom at this point without also making sure that we're copying and informing the mining company. Is he a lessee or is he a agent? What, what is his relationship? Do we know? Probably I, th I, not with uh, enough confidence. Mm -hmm. I think I know what their relationship is, but I, not, uh, not with enough confidence. But to Kyle's point, um, like if it's a landlord tenant issue, and a health issue, we only are able to issue orders against the landlord, not the tenant. It may be the same thing with this, where we have to issue an order against the mining company, mm -hmm. and we may not go after it. They may have to deal with Tom. I don't know. It might be totally different because the highway right away. Yeah. Well, 10 to 1 says they would have a lot more leverage than That's us. <clears throat> and here's Johnson, and here's BASF. Yeah. Right. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> well, he was cutting timber that they didn't even know about, too, right? I'm, I can't really say what they know about what he's doing on their land. I have suspicions, but I, I, don't, I don't know enough about his relationship with BASF to really comment. Should we uh, pull our attorneys in on how to deal with this? Uh, that's kind of what I, I need from the board is uh, do we want to start researching the procedure to have uh, his installations removed from our right of way? Yes. Yes. Sounds like right. good agreement there. I believe that would be the only things of interest to Brian, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's it. But you're more than welcome to stay. I'd like to, but I'm going to go. Okay. <laughs> Charlie, are you here to give a planning commission report? No. So there is no planning commission report? You guys, in your last meeting, last couple weeks ago, said you were going to tell the planning commission what to do, and Doug, you have a bazillion pieces of information for us. Oh, yeah, I do. Send it to us. No. no, we were just talking about the. No, we were just talking about the class four road policy, which is going on your plate. I read that. So, okay. And you said in, you know, so send out that information to the members. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get the chairman to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huh? Want to start in your report now? Sure. I've got a facility use request for Legion Field. Uh, this was submitted by Cal Stanton uh, for the Vermont Progressive Party uh, meet and greet. We want to use the bread oven and the field bandstand, uh, kind of all of Legion Field. What was the date? It is July 14th. Yes, July 14th. Okay. That doesn't compete with the Tuesday night or anything? No. Okay. Um, I don't remember what day of the week that is, but. What's the board's pleasure? 
Move to approve. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion second. Any discussion? What were the hours? Uh, eight to eight. Eight to eight. Okay. Sunday. On a Sunday. Thank you. July 14th is a Sunday. Yep. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Historical Society vacancies. Yep. So we received uh, when we were making appointments, we'd received a resignation from Jane Marshall, and the Historical Society uh, recommended that Kelly Van Dorn uh, be the replacement for Jane Marshall. Uh, since the board has last met, we also received a resignation. Uh, Frank Dodge has resigned from the board. Uh, we have a couple other applicants, but the uh, Historical Society has not made a recommendation yet. Uh, furthermore, Duncan's position as the select board's representative on the Historical Society is due for reappointment also. And Duncan uh, wasn't able to be here, but he did express an interest in serving again. What's the board's pleasure? Kelly, what kind of pies do you make? <laughs> this time I made better scotch. Oh. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> well, Maybe we should sample it before we <laughs> <laughs> So we need to appoint Kelly. Is that the Kelly and, and uh, the board Kelly for Duncan. Jane Marshall and Duncan uh, as a reappointment. And then we have two applicants for Frank Dodge's position, and the uh, Historical Society has not made a recommendation. A specific recommendation yet. All right, so, um, let's, so we'd wait on that one. So we'll move Kelly and uh, Duncan for appointment to the Historical Society. Second. And Duncan being our liaison. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next to the Conservation Commission, um, sorry, Lois, I didn't make a note of it. Who had resigned from Conservation? Laura. Laura Branca. Laura Branca thank you. Um, Laura Branca has resigned from the Conservation Commission, and Jared Jasinski has uh, see, uh, put his name forward, has met with the Conservation okay. Commission, uh, and is interested in serving. Perfect. Motion to move. Who moved? I moved. I second. You second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That's really good. Yeah. yeah we're going right down through here. Good. Hazardous yep. waste <laughs> inspection. So hazardous waste. Uh, we, you saw in Brian's report that uh, we had a surprise inspection. Uh, during that surprise inspection, we found out that our records are a little out of date. Um, for the state, uh, the state still reads uh, Steve Town as the contact person. Uh, and also um, uh, that the right now the village and town are one entity. Uh, according to the state. So we're inspected and reported oh, together. It's a sign. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we just saved them all out of Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's in process of yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, in this one regard. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to be updating the records. Uh, I was planning on working with Meredith and investigating if the, you know, if it would make if we would run into any trouble, if we did separate the designation between the two, uh, you know that you know we wouldn't. If they got fined for something, we wouldn't want to be responsible for it. They wouldn't want, want to be responsible if we got fined for something. Absolutely. Um, I don't. Did they get checked too? Yeah. We got, they, again, they, we're one entity. They checked the whole thing. They. They. Okay. So no issues with them either. Um. They. They were able to fix their issues. Okay. Good answer. So, 
Would we still be held liable uh, even if something was in the village building because they're jointly owned buildings or vice versa, something in our building? Potentially, because yeah. uh, again, to the state, We're it's one entity. One entity. Okay. Uh, that, and that would also make either Bryant or Troy the contact person and mm -hmm. that person would have to cover so we may not be able to split. the other entity, like the other building. So right now, I mean, it's incorrect because it lists Steve Town, but yep. Steve Town is on paper the contact point person for the town garage and the village garage. Uh, so we're going to look into, because it's jointly owned property, we might not be able to separate the two right. uh, because it is, they are both technically owned by the town and the village. Yeah even though they're each wholly operated. But then we also have the shared facility of the cold storage. Mm -hmm. So that might be why it's considered one entity, is it might not be possible to extricate ourselves and, and create two separate entities. But I'm going to devote some time to trying to figure that out. Perfect. Going back in history, is there any, any agreement to Tom and the village with regard to indemnification for their use and liability that gets imposed on us? Or I don't I believe so. so. I don't either. No. Okay, so there'll be more to come on that? Yes. Sheriff's report, that's just the one we got by email, right? Yep. Light Industrial Park? Uh, we've got... Uh, submitted letter of interest for the Northern Borders Regional Grant. Uh, round one for the EDA. I'm kind of in the pre-process for that. Uh, I'm, I've got a meeting later this week with uh, some representatives from the EDA. Uh, I finished our application and then before submitting it, I had a couple of questions and they offered to review our entire application package before its official submittance. Uh, so meeting with their uh, grant readers and some of their engineers uh, going over the application before it submits. So that should give us a pretty good leg up on getting approved. Good. Nice. Uh, anybody got anything on that? Any questions? No. I've also heard from uh, and spoken to Don Foote recently, who represents a couple of people that would be interested in purchasing property there. So uh, the sooner that we can get a road up, the sooner we can start selling some parcels. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good news. It is. We just got to get the construction money together. Yeah. So before we get into the stop sign ordinance and other old business, why don't we do the items that we added? Rec coordinator position. So you have a note from me that's got a rough timeline of how I see the process going for the uh, rec coordinator. I met with uh, rec over the weekend. Um, and Nat, correct me if I'm wrong, the only, I believe the date that we really hammered out was that February 2nd as being the, the posting date for the News and Citizen, which will be the day after the select board's uh, meeting on the first Monday in May. Yeah, you said February, but said February. April. Is April, sorry, yeah. thank you. Uh, it'll go out April 2nd after the board's meeting on the 1st of April. Yeah. Uh, so you'll have a chance to approve the posting then, uh, and then I'll, I'll post it the next day. Um, have that out for about a month during that time or before then we'll, we'll have finished putting together the search committee. Uh, the search committee will, um, you know, work on, uh, kind of picking through who are we going to interview, who are we going to talk to. Um, do two rounds of interviews with the search committee and then bring it before the board. I'm thinking that we have it before the board. Um, the early in June, 
after the board makes their approval in June, we can make the offer and uh, project to have the candidates start the first Monday after the 4th of July. Do we think the search committee would need to do two rounds of interview? I, that's kind of how I like to do it, uh, that, but this is my personal preference. Um, I usually, when I'm doing interviews, we do this for the highway department. Um, I like to kind of screen on paper, then okay. conduct an interview, then check references and follow up, then have a second interview uh, based on anything that came up on the reference check, things like that, and, and then move on from there. What do you think of that, Nat? I like it. Okay. I just thought good. they would have, the candidates are going to have to have three interviews. But um, I can involve, I can try and streamline that a little bit. Well, it was just, I was asking the question. I, you know, maybe it's not a big deal, but. Uh, it's also, to a certain degree, it's up to this board of how involved do you want your interview to be. I mean, yes. when it's a highway employee, this board is a pretty involved right, right. part of the process. I'm envisioning this being fairly similar to when we hire a highway employee. The wage scale and responsibilities are not not the same, though. So, uh, okay. No, I don't. I don't have an issue with it. I was just I was just questioning it. Could be an option too. I mean, if if it's very clear after the first interview round of interviews, then maybe the committee makes a. Who is yep. the search committee? Is that uh, gonna, we're going to have to put that together. Okay. But uh, should we put that together tonight, or should we put that together uh, in a couple of weeks? Made up mostly of rec committee people, probably, right? Uh, well, we uh, we wouldn't want to form a quorum of kind of either board. So I would think one or two rec committee people, one or two skate park, and one or two select board members. And also, there's a um, Chess Pickford has been very involved in. Mm -hmm sort of defining what the job would be and how it works. She's got a great deal of experience in this area, and so I would like to con have her considered as well for the uh, search committee. Now, were you suggesting when you said that if uh, something, somebody came out, stood out very, very clear from the outset, that maybe we could push this up a little bit? Well, no, I mean, I think this, Brian has a start date of uh, July 8th, uh, the week before is the 4th of July holiday, so we wouldn't want to start them that week, and we can't start them before that. So I think July 8th is the very first day we would even want us to have somebody come in. So you think the whole process will be fast enough then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think so. As long as we stick to it, I mean, I can see. As long as we stick to it and keep, you know, keep track of it, it should be a good schedule. Okay. Yeah, so I, I guess we're, we'll be looking for a couple of volunteers from, so we're looking for up to two volunteers from Rec, Select Board, Skate Park, and Public. If you're thinking about Jessica Bickford and Beth helped on our last time we had a search committee. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, couldn't think of anybody better. Jess would do a great job. <laughs> so long, you. I'd be happy to help, uh, but if there's too many people, I think having too many people in the interview is not always a good thing. Mm -hmm. Also, um, so depending on who you get, think of me as a substitution, and I'd be happy to help. Okay. Um, but I think making sure you have the right number of people for the interview is important. You could do a role. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll put that together. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then I've got a letter that the uh, we've received from FEMA. Uh, you also received this by an email on Friday, I believe. Uh, where they are going to be... I think you, you forward it to the Planning Commission, not the board. Oh, I didn't give it to the board. No, also. I didn't see it. Conservation Commission, I got one. 
<laughs> That's something. Yeah, I don't feel. I spoke to Phil about whether he got it or not. He had sent back and said that he did. But yeah, I will. Yeah, he might not have gotten it from me. Um, so fill us in. What, what are we talking about? So, uh, FEMA. Are you going to give us some uh, money? They're not going to give us any money for this, but uh, they are talking about updating their flood maps. Uh, which are seriously out of date. Uh, so kind of the first step for possibly updating those maps is going to be a couple information sessions uh, where they're discussing it. And one of them is going to be held here uh, yeah, sent that to us. Yeah. on uh, next Tuesday at uh, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, that's pretty much it. That, uh, as many people as we can, we should be uh, interested in having represent representation there from as many different groups as we can. So you didn't get it? I correct myself. I, I did get it. Okay. And you're going to be here? Something about it. And, and you're going to be there? No. Uh, I know Phil is going to be there. They're going to, it's the feds. They're going to do what they're going to do. Doug? Well, I think what we need to have is somebody, you know, it's not really a planning commission. It's not a policy thing. It's like, don't they want to know where we flood? You know, I think we need someone like Dave Peatman or somebody who's been around the village surveying things and say, well, this is where it's really out of sync. Or, and he might be better able to ask somebody needs to ask them what's their process. How, how are they going to find out where, how are they going to lay it out? How are they going to decide this? Uh, and, and for as far as policy, I'd like to, you know, you're wondering, we got these two competing theories, one of inundation and the other is uh, river, you know, movement. Uh, They're separate issues. Don't oh, I know, I know, but, uh, you know, each of them is operating like one is the true way. I don't disagree. So, so I think that you know, it would be good to have people hear what, the feds want us to do, but they're after information from us, I think. I, I think that that's part of it. I think that this and is... How they're going to gather it. You know, a little bit of a two-way street. They want to provide us with some information about the process, but they also want us to inform them. Well, Howard Romero is our floodplain zoning person. Yep. I, I'm hoping that we'll have Howard represented there, too. But he should have got the email, but we probably should forward it to him just in case. I'm going to reach out and ask specifically for confirmation of whether he's going to be able to make it or not. I guess my question is who who would know what what the problems are in, in this thing or where where they're wrong? Are they asking us for where they're where they're way off? Uh, what are they asking us? Um, I I see it. Yeah. You have read it but uh, I think I need to go and find out a little bit more about what they're asking. I mean, this is the the first part of what, in the best case scenario, is going to be a long process. Uh, it's more informational anyway, because Brian doesn't have any more information than what you or I have. So, you know, they're talking about discovery meeting, but gather information from the Loyal Watershed Discovery Map discuss your community flooding history, flood risk, concern, and mitigation. Any data or information you can provide will aid in this discussion. So they're looking for information from us. Yep. What actions were taken to mitigate flooding so they don't have to pay? <laughs> it's a yeah. money saving activity for them. <laughs> So anyhow, we're all invited. Yes. <laughs> as well as everyone else. <laughs> merger proposal. So you've received the merger proposals, um, and you received my kind of assessment of it. I'm going to send you a, uh, kind of the next step is I'm gonna send you a scoring sheet uh, that's basically a blank copy of the one that I used. Okay. Um, and the idea is that 
we have we should all complete that before the next time uh, we meet or before that we meet with the trustees to review them together uh, we can have a, another meeting where we meet together and discuss it and then meet with the trustees um, did did you and Meredith meet over this a little bit yeah okay and did you both come up with these numbers or I uh, no, these were just mine just yours do you know if hers were in the same she had, has not skipped shared her scoring with me at this time okay so the trustees have not reviewed this any further than we have uh, they're at the same stage that you're at now where they've got okay. scoring sheets and they're going to individually score it and then okay. um, either meet all of us you know as a joint meeting all of us together to review it or uh, you know if, if their next if we don't have a joint meeting scheduled before their next meeting they'll probably review it as the trustees together and then so what's board's pleasure you want to meet once just our board or meet jointly mr chairman uh, reading the trustee minutes uh, there that they discussed this they there's a couple of things that are very clear uh, in it they they don't want to spend any more money than they've been authorized to and for some reason they think if the town spends more money it will have a different influence with the people that are doing the study well I guess I don't understand that. Why would that have if we, if we decide to go with a nine thousand dollar and change one, and they put four thousand, and we put fifty three hundred dollars in it, whatever it was? What difference does it make? It doesn't mean that it's going to come back more in favor with the town and the village. But that's what they think, according to their minutes. What's the timing of our meeting with them in relationship to village meeting? And which board do we want? You know, the board is constituted, the trustees is constituted now, or the trustees is, might, they might be constituted, constituted. It will be the new board, because their, their annual meeting is the second, or no, first Tuesday? Second. Second Tuesday? First Tuesday, the second of Second, equal second. second. Yeah, okay. So it's going to be right off. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, it, I don't think they'd, we have a meeting on April 1st, but I don't think they'd be able to meet the day before the right. village meeting. Uh, I think that would be a little bit too much for most of their board members. Yeah. Chances are the new board will be more agreeable. What are responses to? Uh, we didn't establish a timeline with the, the consultants. Mm -hmm. I know that one of them is interested in hearing back, mm -hmm. but. Well, I mean, the, the, we meet again in two weeks. The best we can do is come back. At do you see meeting. value in us coming back together on our own before? Yeah, sure, yeah why not? Okay. I, think so. I mean, if it's really clear to one body or the other that you know, what the decision is, then or I can just back up and say yes, I think so. Okay. Before we have a joint meeting, have a just our board. Okay. So we could look at these April first, which is more of a work session meeting anyhow. Yep. So we'll plan on that. Mm hmm Okay. All right. Uh, that's it for my items. Mike, you had made the suggestion about the... Oh, yeah. We, uh, I uh, make the motion to approve the inclusivity statement the voters decided on at town meeting March 5th, 2019. Okay, we've got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We've got a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? School board vacancy. You were just questioning the process, right? Yeah. I question, oh, you're questioning the process. Uh, Old Mill Park? No. Sorry. What no, did school you? board. School board. I oh, was questioning the okay. process because okay. last time it seemed like uh, we kind of missed our opportunity for input, and I want to see what's happened this time. Uh, well, the first I saw is uh, on front board's form. Is that right? 
that uh, you know any letters of interest are coming to be sent to me or the office here and sent to the school board chair. Okay. And by the statute, we have a role of uh, was it advisory? I yes, guess yes. Mm -hmm. basically, and that's it. So, so when do we make our recommendation? I don't think there's any candidates yet that I'm aware of. I'm not aware of any. Yet. That'll make it easy. <laughs> but, yeah, we the problem we had with it last time, if I remember, was that one of the candidates came in after the deadline that had been set, yeah. um, and this time but we're, we're we could be faced with the same thing that we don't have any candidates yet. And I don't even know. Well, may have be may have been in their front porch form posting what the deadline yeah. is. But Sometime in the middle of April, I believe. Middle of April? Okay. Mm -hmm. It'll be sometime out there in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And this, Eric, this might be a good time for you to update the board on the uh, state of your recommendation to the legislature about Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that was something we got the league to buy into. Uh, that Richie that, was yeah. drafting language, having language drafted. In all frankness, he told me the likelihood of it moving forward is not high. And the bill was that the, the, select, the town select board would make the appointment right. to the unified district. But I, my guess would be it, it goes on their wall, yeah. and the chair, whoever that committee is, probably government ops, will not take it down. But as more towns because of the number of schools that are unified, start dealing with the same thing we've just been dealt with, this will probably become more interest, and in some future time, it'll get approved. But as of right now, it's just sitting on the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in our assessment and talking to BLCT, there's not a lot of opposition to this. It's just, there's also not a lot of support. Not a lot of energy for it. Yeah. Yeah. They got other things to, worry about okay uh, old mill could we sorry could we just go back to the inclusivity statement for a minute um okay so the one now approved is quite a bit longer than the original one so how are we thinking about how we're going to be publicizing it and Potentially shortening it for certain documents or keeping the original for others. What's what's that process going to look like? Um, I think the first thing we'll get the full statement up on the website on the front page. Um, in terms of how to publicize parts of it that we talked about at, at that original meeting. Um, No, I really have to, to look at it a little bit, but I was thinking that we might be able to incorporate a portion of it into our letterhead so that we've got something about the statement that we can repeat kind of every, you know, see that as a, a regular occurrence and, and kind of work that into uh, our identity to a, a greater degree. Um, but you, you uh, as was brought up, for our town report didn't include the inclusivity statement. That's another, that would, that would have been a really good opportunity where we should have done something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is something that we need to be more mindful of and, and look for places to include it. So if you or, or anybody else has suggestions about where to work this in, I, I'd be happy to hear them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my those are kind of my two thoughts of full form on the website, uh, you know, maybe we can put it up on the, the bulletin boards that we've got in town. Uh, at the very least, we can put it on the bulletin board outside here where we've got uh, a couple other kind of purpose statements. Mm -hmm. um, and then working in a shortened like one sentence into um, you know, town documents. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you wouldn't get 
some more bang for your buck if you, uh, you know, I know Elaine was there, and there were people from the studio center, but I think there are, there are um, institutions here that are interested in, uh, in, and it's good for their uh, business, let's call it, uh, to have, to be able to say, we are located in the town that has this. You know? So I, I'm thinking that you, uh, rather than just our letterhead, and, and I'm a little leery of shortening, things, but uh, I'm thinking about other people that might use the entire statement. Mm -hmm. So kind of suggest to them that Johnson's adopted this. Uh, yeah. If we have it on our web page, then they can reference it or link to it. Everybody can see it. Yeah. It's very visible. Can it get up on our web page pretty soon, or is that? Yeah, that will okay. be any trouble. Make it a priority? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. And old mill. Yeah, so clean up or like a couple meetings ago, I um, put out the idea of doing a spring cleanup for Old Mill Park, mostly around the walking trail mm -hmm. that's getting grown in, and um, just to preserve it and make it use, continue to make it usable. So I was just um, hoping to start uh, advertising for to get volunteers to help, but wondering what our uh, what the parameters are. Like um, I'm thinking it's mostly going to be a bunch of us out there with clippers and things like that. But if there's things that require a chainsaw, I, you know, I don't know what liability-wise and what's appropriate. Good question. What's the Conservation Commission do when you are using chainsaws and things on town property? Well, one of the requirements for being a member of the Conservation Commission is you run a chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second only to be my cookies. <laughs> so we have a number of people who run chainsaws. OK. And any time that we work with youth, the youth, the people who are working with them are the ones that ran the chainsaws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the policy is make sure somebody responsible and knowledgeable is doing it. Right. And yeah. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. And because we're fully insured by the town, you know, we tend to be careful. Mm -hmm. That might be a labor force, is some youth group. Wear away the Boy Scouts. Yeah, I was thinking about whoever. that. Coupled with, you know, community service yeah. type of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a group at the college too that serve. serve. Yeah. They do a wonderful job. Yep. They, they come in. And they have yeah. Great. Right. I would suggest if you're going to organize something like this, that uh, one of the first things you do is walk it with Brian Krause and see what he thinks his mm -hmm. people could do and where where that uh, other people could, uh, you, where you wouldn't need their equipment and you could use other, uh, other people. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know what the winter has brought in terms of yeah. damage. It seems like there were a, a few, couple of trees that were down in yeah. the old established road. Yeah. Or two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything well, else? No, I'll, I'm just starting to think about it. Great. Along that same theme, we need a new green up coordinator. Were you any success with Jen? I haven't heard yet. Okay. If anybody else has anybody else in mind, Beth just left. Let's appoint her. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, make motion. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you if yeah. if you know somebody who has interests. Uh, certainly give their name to Brian and along yeah. that I, I have a posting to go up on front porch forum uh, for it yeah okay and that'll go up uh, with tomorrow's front porch forum and along that same theme I didn't add it but I got to think about it later is there any uh, desire from the board to go out for bids for mowing if we were going to do that we would need to do that right off so we could make the selection in April. 
Can we go out to bid last year? We didn't go out to bid last year. We haven't been for uh, a few years, I don't think. If we don't go this year, we have to go, well, you know, there's no actual requirement, but we really should go in the next couple of years, uh, this year or next year. I think it's been... It's hard to beat what we have. No, and... I it has been. The yeah. last time we went out for bid, we selected them again because they were the lowest bid. Right. But just for the uh, Keep transparency it and the, yeah. So I'm not, I'm throwing it out if the board thinks that we should go out for bid and we should have it for next April or our April, regular April meeting. Yeah. How long has it been since they've raised their price? It's been quite a few years. Uh, they've level funded us for, well, uh, they had level funded us before I, uh, for at least a couple of years before I started. Uh, so I, I estimated five, six years. Oh, it's a little long. How long has it been since we went out to bed? It hasn't been since I've been here. Yeah, it was some number of years. Do we think their prices are too high? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I. I no. I'm not, not saying fix it if it isn't it, we could get by without going okay. bid and uh, I, let anybody try to beat them. Yeah. Nobody could beat them. No. I, I think to be good stewards, we should at some point go out to bid, but I don't have a lot of confidence that anybody's going to beat them. So the only thing I, I was at a library trustee meeting last week. Yes. And they are very interested in having. Correct me if I'm wrong, but very interested in having their lot being covered in the mowing contract they are starting this year they are starting this year okay great that we uh removed some money from their budget to make room for it oh that's right okay oh great thank you yeah. <clears throat> okay well, before transparency we should go out to bed it's up to the board i just threw it out There's transparency and then there's make work. I understand, but uh, there is perception too. Okay. Thoughts yeah. down this way? I'm happy putting it off a year. I'll put it off a year. Let's put it necessary. this way. Let me make a motion, and if it if it dies lack of a second, okay. you'll know the answer. I make the motion. We go out to bed. Okay. Uh, and I guess I'm going to rule the motion out of order because this wasn't was even it, on our was agenda. It <laughs> okay. But it was. I had nice. a feeling you were going to do that. Next year we'll put it on. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll do it next year. So you get you get yourself out of that one, didn't you? He raised it. He set you up. Yeah. Well, your position. It made me look good, but everybody else looked bad. <laughs> your position's on the record, Mike. <laughs> Review old business. Did you have anything you want to do in there? No real changes to anything <laughs> on our old business. Um, Yeah, we've got a, a few things that are timely and need to move forward. The big issue we discussed last time is died, has it? With the overtime? Yes. Yeah, uh, that, that's going uh, much more smoothly right now. Um, so right now, I'm going to say my highest priorities in the old business. Mm -hmm. Uh, currently, nothing's moved forward, but my highest priority items are uh, the gravel pit and uh, the Sinclair right of way, uh, because I think the Sinclair right of way is going to be a relatively easy. I have at least a small step forward that I can take on that that's not going to take much of my time. Uh, I just need to. Was that the do business it. I was talking about a while back on the Sinclair right of way? Uh, I don't remember. I think Matt brought it up, but it's a five rod road. Yeah, we yeah. believe that it might be a five rod road. Um, we think that the most recent maps that VTrans had to do for the 100 
see Twin Bridges should have answered that question. So I'm going to ask their uh, uh, mapping staff to do a review for me. So we haven't done that since we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Actually, no, they're the ones that brought it into question. Right. We they brought it up the, at the first point that this could be an issue. Uh, I'm going to ask them if they've got a resolution to tell us one way or the other. Do you want me to call or do you want to call? I'll, I'll take care of it. Okay. Uh, I've got a pretty good relationship with a couple people in the staff. Uh, so, the uh, old business? Yes. We don't have the blighted building ordinance on it. And something I noticed that, that we were going to handle after a meeting two years ago was the, we were going to address the clock tower. Yes. How's the uh, conflict resolution training coming? That's for our road crew, right? That's for the road crew. It looks like we are going to have to send our guys out for that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, it's basically, it's, it's not going to work out whether we bring somebody in or send somebody out. Uh, it's not going to work well for us until we're kind of well out of the season. Um, okay. We can attend the trainings for free uh, if we go to that. If we bring them here, we have to pay for them. How far away are they? Uh, South Burlington. Oh, it's not bad. Uh, what, but what, either way, we if we 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 need our guys to have the free time yeah. to go to something like that, uh, which we don't currently have. Then how about the board's training? Uh, the board's training. I'm going to work with Greg Stefanski on trying to select and develop uh, training for that. And that might be done right here. Uh, ideally. Okay. Um, this one is a little more specific because of the uh, HR needs and other things that we've got with uh, the one for the highway department. So we've got a few more needs than a volunteer board. Because they're employees. Yeah. yeah. I've also been doing some digging for the board's training and have some information on that. Okay. Cool. And you spoke to the highway about having a meeting with them to talk about the uh, call-in policy? Yes, uh, we have that uh, tentatively as our uh, second meeting in April or the first meeting in May. The second meeting in April would be our regular meeting. Right. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good one. Okay. But the first, first meeting in May would be a good one. All right. And they should be beyond mud season that's the idea. I hope. Uh, is that uh, a couple of their members would not be available uh, for our first meeting in April. Mm -hmm. So then that puts a little bit farther down the line. So, Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else? No. I think that's it. Anybody got anything else? This is like a Did record. Did you get an answer for your blighted building? He put it on his list. Anybody have any comments? No, uh, we're going to have a. Five you said no. <laughs> <laughs> then you start talking. It's not a comment. Okay. I'm making a comment, making an announcement. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a meeting on 10 30 next Monday with uh, MC Firewood. Let's start with Meyer Johnson. Okay. AM or PM? AM. Okay. Here. Nice. So now the select board's been notified of the meeting. Did you hear the um, Vermont edition segment on broadband? Yes. Okay. I was going to forward it to you if you had it. No, no, no new information. Okay. okay. Just making sure. Nothing new. Nothing new. Okay. Unless anybody's got anything else, we'll stand adjourned. Whoa. This is a record breaking meeting.